Hello there, Naomi Kaufman. How are you doing? John Armando, you made it. Yay. Hey, Charles. Where are you doing? Good morning. Well, good morning. You couldn't what get happened? through this morning? I couldn't get through the Zoom. It didn't work for me. Right. I know. It didn't work for a bunch of people. Um, they seemed to be having some kind of issue this morning. I don't know what it was, but yeah, it's, it's like a lot of people couldn't get through this morning. So how you yeah. didn't say anything important this morning? Uh, well, uh, unfortunately I did, but that's uh -oh. okay. That's okay because we're going to repeat a lot of it. Uh, because, uh, well, as okay. I'm going to explain to you very shortly, um, we, we are in the middle of taking a trip collectively, okay? A what? The middle of what? Taking a trip. A trip. Oh, we're going we're gonna to travel. Good. Yes, we're going to all travel together. You know, go we're, we're going on a virtual travel excursion together. Okay? Let's go Alaska. No, we're not going that far. Okay. Um, where you're going, uh, well, this afternoon and where they went this morning was the uh, Cobb Marietta Museum. And uh, what's going on there right now is that they, uh, let's see, what it was last Saturday, uh, on the 11th, I think it was, they opened up the museum uh, for an exhibition called Metro Montage. And uh, Metro Montage, uh, they've got about 200, uh, individual pieces of art there. Uh, I think there's something like about 160, 170 artists who are participating. And for the most part, you know, you would call them local or regional artists. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some people there who, uh, you know, you could classify as national and international artists as well. And I'm going to be pointing some of those out, but uh, we'll go back. We'll take a real quick review uh, very quickly. I won't give the in-depth commentary that I gave this morning, but we're gonna go back through it so that most of you can see uh, the work you know, that's there. Uh, and one of the reasons that I went ahead and did that was uh, right now, uh, I think it's probably a good idea for a lot of you not to get out and go to places that have uh, large numbers of people around them. Now, here's the good news. Uh, Cobb Marietta Museum, which is just off of Marietta Square. It's a very small uh, local art museum, but uh, they have a, a new curator there. Uh, her name is Maddie Beck. Uh, many of you know her because you've drawn her at Benson. She used to model for us, what, about three, four years ago. And, um, and she's doing a great job. And uh, this by far, I've been participating in this show since it started about uh, 20 years ago. And I probably, entered and gotten into the show about eight times out of those 20 years. Uh, this, uh, this is by far probably one of the better quality uh, shows out of their 20 years. So it's definitely getting better. So I'm gonna share, and uh, like I said, I'm gonna zoom through like the first half of these very quickly so you can at least see them. And um, you know, after, after we do that, you know, I'll slow it down, and on the later half, I'll give you some more uh, more in-depth commentary. Okay, uh, this is where we ended this morning. Okay, and uh, you know, it's really not very far down the list, but this this actually took an honorable mention, and uh, I was talking about it. It was in the middle of the conversation when Zoom cut us off. Uh, what this is is this is a painting. Uh, it's gouache. Okay. Now, gouache is an opaque type of watercolor. You don't see it used a lot uh, in these days, but it is becoming more and more popular again. And uh, it, it's great to use this way because it has kind of a very flat graphic look to it. And uh, if you're reproducing your work, if you're photographing it in particular for online use or for reproduction, um, it's that's what it's actually made for, okay? Uh, the color is very intense, highly saturated. Uh, 
you know, it's matte, you know, very flat, so you don't get a lot of hot spots and, and gloss to it. And uh, it's great for reproduction, okay? Um, and, you know, and you can use it a lot of different ways. You can use it like watercolor. If you thin it down enough, you can do washes and things with it. Uh, but then you can come back over with heavier passages or, or thicker passages that are fully okay. Uh, so you can work with it both ways. Uh, it dries quickly, uh, you know, to this matte sort of finish. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good paint to use. Um, I used it as an illustrator for many years, uh, along with regular watercolor, and then uh, pretty much so later on switched to acrylic and stayed with acrylic because it, it's very versatile and you can get the same kind of effects with acrylic. Though, unless you put a, uh, an agent to make it totally matte uh, when you photograph it, uh, because the acrylic does have some surface texture, a lot of times it will get a little bit shiny and you'll get a hot spot on it. So, uh, but you can, you can keep care of that. Uh, anyway, as I said, <clears throat> uh, this was, uh, by a lady by the name of Melanie Ebhardt, and I've met her before. Um, I wasn't really, yeah, I wasn't really aware that she, uh, you know, worked in gouache. Maybe this is a fairly new thing for her, I don't know. Uh, but this got an honorable mention in the show. Uh, the next piece I'm gonna show you, uh, and again, I'm going backward real quickly, is uh, Phil Carpenter, who I've known for many, many years. Uh, and he did this piece. Now, Phil works completely in color pencil, okay? So for those of you who are having trouble, you know, using color pencils and keep uh, you know, these, these subtle Hello. then uh, here's a good example of what you can do with color pencil, right? Uh, here's a detail. And you see, he doesn't go at this very aggressively. He builds it up very, very slowly, right? Is he, uh, and uh, Elon, I can hear you talking, so. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Mute yourself. Um, so anyway, you know, build this stuff up slowly and you can begin to get these subtle gradations, right? And he'll, he'll work with, uh, you can get the color pencils themselves, but you can also get a set of pencils that actually have a clear medium in them called blenders. And, you know, they're not white, you know, they're, they're clear, they're transparent. So when you want to even out a surface and get rid of the grain, you can work back into it and it helps kind of smooth it all out and even out the surface. Right? Charles. Yes. That is a drawing, right? Yes, that's color pencil. It looked to me like a picture. Uh -huh. Look at the numbers on the left. The uh -huh. 172. Yeah. That looks like it's actually stamped. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it. that's because, again, notice he's got the dark line, but to one side of it, he has a lighter line to give it some dimension, right? Mm -hmm. And that gives it that recessed or stamped feeling, okay? So anyway, that was Phil Carpenter. Uh, this piece uh, took third place, and it... Uh, when I first saw this, <clears throat> I thought that it was uh, ceramic, but in fact, it's glass, okay? And it's, uh, you know, molded glass in a kiln. Uh, so they started with a sheet and then they, they bent it and molded it. Uh, and then they probably added some kind of colorant to the glass, you know, while it was still hot. And then uh, after it cooled, they went in with an engraving tool and carved into the glass itself to create this pattern. Now, the pattern didn't come off black when they carved into it. Uh, what they did later is they took acrylic paint, they painted over the surface and rubbed it all back, leaving the paint, you know, in the low spots. And, uh, you know, that brought out that design. And uh, anyway, this was a third place. Wow. I, I, I... Charles, can you can you show the other side of that? Um... Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, you were here this morning. You saw it. Um, yeah, this is the yeah. This is from the side. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's two pieces. Uh, but yeah, it is. It's it's amazing, you know, craftsmanship. 
you know, on that piece. And just, you know, when I first looked at it, you know, I was kind of wondering about the design itself. And then, you know, you have to get up fairly close and look at it, which is nice about a small museum that, you know, they don't have a guard standing there going, <coughs> you're too close. Um, but this is actually, you can see where they took a tool and they carved, you know, like a Dremel tool or something and carved into the glass. Okay. Mm. And in each one of those dark areas, that's what happened is they engraved into it and then they, you know, put a paint over it, and rubbed it off, you know, leaving the paint embedded, you know, in the uh, incised area. Okay. You said those are two separate pieces. Yes. Yeah. Those okay. are two separate pieces. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. But, you know, they, they put them together as a, as a set. Or a oh, pair. yeah. Yeah. Do they put, do they put the, paint on after it's been in the kiln or before the kiln? Uh, afterward. <laughs> yeah. And the paint does not come off? Uh, well, off that's, that's why they put it in on afterward. See? Uh, once, one, you know, they put the paint on after they, you know, they, they mold it while the glass is hot. So they've got to put it in a kiln, bend it, shape it, and then they'll let the kiln cool down and take the piece out and let it totally cool so that it hardens. Once it hardens, then they engrave it with that engraving tool, like a Dremel or something. And then they'll put that layer of paint over it and then rub it back, um, you know, to leave the pattern, okay? Mm. But, but yeah, once it's in the kiln and it's cooled off, that's when they do, you know, all the other work uh, to it. Now I wanna show you this piece because this was the uh, first place uh, piece and in particular I wanted to show this to you because out of everything in that show uh, this literally floored me and I've, I've known Gail for 20 years and in, in those 20 years uh, she's one of these people that you would call an internationally known artist okay uh, you know she's won many many awards uh, all around the world for her work uh, she's an oil painter and uh, when you see this piece, you'll probably know why. Now, this is a fairly large painting. Okay? Wow. And this is actually, I'm kind of zoomed in on it. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, there's the whole painting. Um, Holy cow. I know. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty amazing, you know, oil painting. A lot now, of people. Yeah. Now, this, this took, you know, evidently, you know, a great deal of time to do. But uh, as I was telling everybody this morning, there's everything about this painting is right. You know, I mean, she designed everything very carefully, very meticulously, um, you know, worked out the lighting, uh, you know, the amount of, of light and sheen on the surface for each of these materials from the metals on the lamp to the lampshades to the wood you know, to the reflections uh, in the glass uh, of the, uh, the, the photos and things that are hung at the end of the bookshelf, uh, to the light coming in the room, you know, and backlighting, you know, everything. Uh, you know, she meticulously worked on this and, uh, and she does literally, I mean, yeah. you know, she's, she's, she's got a lot of respect in my book. <laughs> You know, I've, I've seen her work before and I've never seen anything to this level. But uh, this is simply an amazing painting and it would be well worth your time just to go down and see it if you didn't see anything else. Um, it's, it's incredible. And uh, I did a couple of close-ups. You know, this is a shot of the figure of the tables. It's amazing what the just through the curtains what she's done. Uh huh. Yeah, just yeah, capturing the light. You know, that's all she did was the curtains. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, moly. Yeah, yeah. Just wow. an amazing piece, you know. And and that's why I'm saying, you know, there's there's so much really good work in this show, but but this really, you know, this getting first prize, you know, uh, there's no doubt, you know, about you know, technically what is the better painting in, in throughout the whole show. And so I've really got to give her a lot of credit. Uh, this piece right here took third, okay? This is uh, Ron Whittingham and it's a watercolor. 
and it's an unusual uh, piece. Um, this is, like I said, it took third place. And, you know, at first, you know, it seems like a fairly simple painting, but then, you know, when you begin to look at it after a while, uh, you know, the textures, the patterns, the transition of color, um, you know, the way he's sort of graphically treated the forms, you know, really do make this piece uh, kind of special. And again, you know, I think it's a, a really good choice, uh, you know, for a, uh, for a prize in the show. So, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure everybody saw those. Um, and let's see, still cannot get in. Yeah, Linda's having trouble getting in. Um, and I wanted you to also see this piece. Uh, this was by an artist by the name of Charles Walls. Uh, Charles and I, you know, a lot of people confuse us, <laughs> you know, because we have the same first name. But uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting, you know, that that goes on. But uh, yeah, this is one of his. And again, this is a fairly large painting, really nicely done. Is this an oil? Yeah, it's an oil paint. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charles uh, Young Walls is his whole name. And uh, anyhow, yeah, he's a good guy to, you know, if you want to look, uh, he's fairly well known, uh, certainly on the level of what you would call a regional artist. Uh, you know, he, he enters into a lot of shows and uh, shows a lot of work, okay? So is those are the piece also? Pardon? Large piece? Yes, it is. It's, it's probably uh, a good 48 to 60 inches tall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, it's a fairly large painting. Yeah. Charles, what's, his, what's the title? Oh, the title on this, okay. I'm gonna have to ask that after I scroll down. Let's see, uh, the links of her Rubicon. Oh, thank you. All right, that's the title of the piece. All right, so moving on, um, you know, that was, that was the highlights. I like that he didn't put features on the face. Yeah, he, he simplified it quite a bit. It was, it was more about the lighting and the figure. Yeah, uh, that would be my style. What, putting too many features on? or Yeah, too many, too many features. Yeah, yeah, you kind of overwork. I'll just, just shade it with some, something and let it go. Okay, well, that's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is uh, Lee Hopkins Henry. I've known Lee for a good number of years. Uh, you know, she's a local artist, um, but, you know, she shows regionally. Um, you know, does beautiful work. Uh, she has a tendency to do workshops in Europe every year. Uh, and she's taken to going to this place called Givernay, uh, which was the gardens that uh, Monet uh, basically designed and, you know, it was his home. Um, and actually I saw another artist do a, a workshop demo uh, from this very, very same view. So, um, but, you know, this is a very nice painting. Um, you know, I, I could get a little critical about some of the things. Uh, to me, it's a little bit flat. Uh, you know, she separated out the light and, and the, the shadow areas very nicely from each other. But there's something about, you know, the intensity of the color and the contrast that pulls that background forward for me and, and kind of flattens the painting out. And if I were doing this, you know, uh, I would probably take and tweak that back area and lower the intensity of it, not necessarily change the value, but probably, well, you know, I would probably lower the intensity of that kind of yellowy green color. And then the darker greens, uh, again, I might gray down more and also maybe even lighten the value a bit. So Again, it pushes that area back further and lets those greens and things in the foreground pop forward. Um, you know, that's that's me being critical again. Um, the next one is uh, Jan uh, DiPietro. She's from Marietta. Uh, and this is called Blue's Garden. And uh, this is a really fascinating piece. You know, when, when you first look at it, you don't quite get 
you know, all that's really going on there. Um, and this is the piece right here. It almost looks uh, like a print. Um, and it's a mixed media piece. But, and I'm not sure how she pulled off all the different things that she did on it. But, uh, you know, the more you look at this piece, you know, the, at least for me, you know, it kind of grows on you after a while and you begin to get, you know, kind of pulled into the piece and try to figure out, you know, how she, how she did some of the things she did. Uh, you know, some of these textures and patterns that sort of overlay each other. It's almost like they were, you know, block printed uh, one over the other. But uh, it's a lino cut. That's what it is. Yeah. Lino lino cut. What is that? Well, it's uh, it's like you take a linoleum block and you cut into it. And you cut. Yeah. And then you make a print out of it, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You. But that's but not all she did. On the block. Yeah, because it's not all just block printed. You know, there's some areas that are block printed. There's some areas that look like they were actually sort of collaged. Uh, there's a variety of things, you know, going on in there. Um, but it's it's an interesting piece. It really is, uh, you know, beautifully done. Um, this is uh, Arlene Morris Morrison. Uh, again, it's a it's a watercolor, and this is on a particular paper that they call Yupo. And yep. Yupo, it, it's, it's almost like a drafting mylar, okay? It's got a kind of a plasticky feel to it, and it's not I really- call it, I call it white uh, uh, wax paper. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, but a lot of watercolor artists really love working on this um, yeah. because, oh. yeah, because the water doesn't soak in and saturate into it. It leaves these puddles you know, of the color, and it has a really unique look to it uh, in the end. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, some people handle it really well. Uh, I've tried one or two things on Yupo and hated working on it, because <laughs> it's just, it, you know, you've got to use such a delicate touch with things. You know, you'll put color down it because it doesn't really sink in. If you touch the brush to it uh, before it's completely dry, you can pull color up very easily off of it. And so I didn't really enjoy working on it. Um, this is uh, Shelly LeBand. Le um, now I've met her, I've known her for a good number of years through the Atlanta Artist Center. And uh, she's a very good artist. Um, you know, this is, a, this is her piece, it's an oil, right? Is it oil or is it acrylic? Let's see, come on Shelly. It's not letting me go back there. Yeah, it's oil, okay. Oil. Yeah, um, but it's a really striking piece and it's it's fairly large. Uh, it's probably about a, at least a, probably a 30 by 40, um, mm -hmm. maybe even bigger than that. You know, it's, it's beautifully done. And, you know, I'm not quite sure how she went about, you know, creating those backgrounds and textures, but my guess is, that she created the background first with all the texture and stuff. And then she masked off that center part and then glazed over, you know, the outside to darken it, you know, so it was all probably this, you know, this lighter yellow, you know, to begin with. And then uh, she glazed back, you know, that outside circle. And then she went back in and, and painted in the figure opaquely you know, blocking out some of the underlying texture, but then as she moved down the figure, you know, made it more and more transparent, you know, so that that background still showed through uh, consistently. And so, you know, technically when you start looking at this and trying to figure out how she did it, it's, it's an interesting piece uh, and it was, you know, it, it was a nice piece. And it just happened to be sitting right next to, uh, you know, the thing that I entered, okay? And this is a painting that I had, uh, I had started many, many years ago, uh, probably around about 2010, 2011, and uh, hadn't really finished it. And then around about 2017, early 2018, went back to it and, uh, you know, tried to, uh, you know, finish it up. And so, and this is a large piece. It's, it's about uh, six feet tall. Wow. Woo. 
and uh, and I would have I would have shot it straight on, but unfortunately the way that they had the lights uh, on it, you know, it had a, a bright hot spot, you know, right there in the middle of the face when you're standing right in front of it. So that was a bit annoying. Um, we have uh, Linda uh, Moppet. I don't really know her. Um, you know, I think I've, I've heard of her before. I've seen her work around. Again, you know, it's, it's a lovely uh, landscape. And this is a fairly large painting. It's probably uh, about four feet tall. Um, you know, it's got lots and lots of texture and lots of detail and stuff in it. Um, you know, it's, to me, you know, it's, it's nicely painted, you know, um, it's, and it's got, you know, pretty good compositional ele elements in it, nice light and shadows. Uh, but for whatever reason, you know, it, uh, it's not one of those things that I would get excited about. Yeah. Um, this is Linda Latard, and I've known Linda for many, many years. She's a, a member of the Atlanta Artist Center, again. And uh, this is a watercolor piece that she did. And this is kind of a medium-sized piece, um, but it's, it's nicely done, you know, um, and it's, I would say that, uh, you know, the photograph is, is a fair representation of it as far as color and things. I'd say it's a little more saturated than this came out. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a beautiful drawing, you know, and, and she's handled the transition of colors and the textures and things on it, you know, very well. Uh, this is uh, Patricia Hahn. I don't, again, you know, I don't really know her um, that well, but she's painting, you know, one of my favorite cities in the world, uh, Lyon, which I lived in for about nine months. And this is a, a cafe scene. And, uh, you know, again, you know, it's, it's a beautiful little watercolor. Um, well, not so little, really. Like and, uh, you know, nice color, nice movement with the figures and things in it. Um, and it's, it's a pretty traditional looking watercolor. Uh, as far as the, uh, the type and things on the buildings, uh, in looking at this, she probably uh, put a mask on them, you know, a liquid mask. She probably painted those in first before she put down the red, and then she peeled up the mask afterward, uh, you know, to save those whites in those areas, yeah. Uh, next, we have, uh, you know, Bob uh, Lenzman. Again, you know, I really don't know him that well. But this, this was a really interesting piece. Um, you know, it's pigmented volcanic rock on canvas. And so he had to have put down some kind of acrylic ground uh, and then embed this, uh, you know, these fine little, like, rock bits in there. And before that, you know, more than likely, I'm, I'm guessing that he added some kind of pigment to it, you know, to create the different colors in there. But this is a really fascinating piece in the sense that, you know, um, if I'm not sure what he used, you know, to adhere all of this to there. I'm guessing it's an acrylic, but, uh, you know, it's, it's nice and even. And I'm kind of thinking, well, I don't know. You know, I really don't know how he is adhered it. But he put all that stuff down and then he went and he wrote into it, you know, leaving, you know, the handwriting uh, in there, showing the, the background back to the English. And uh, it's, it's a fascinating piece to look at and try to figure out, you know, what he did. Uh, as you can see, you know, it's all, it's just little bits of like gravel, you know, but really tiny stuff. Okay, and then this is all kind of cut back through with a tool or the end of a brush or something to actually write with. Uh, this is a good friend of mine. His name is Patrick McGannon. And Patrick, uh, he, uh, he works as an art restorer. Uh, he specializes in restoring paper. Um, so if, if you have old documents, uh, old artwork, watercolors, things like that, that have been damaged, uh, you know, he can clean them and repair the paper and, you know, retouch, you know, the, the pieces. 
Uh, but he's a, he's a very good painter, you know, in his own right as well. Wow. And, uh, you know, that's his piece. And I'm going to have to move a little faster than down to our last 10 minutes. So moving on, uh, the third watch. Um, I've heard of Christy. I don't know her. Um, but this was a very strong piece, you know, it's the oil. And my guess is it's an oil painting, but it's over some kind of acrylic base. You know, looking at the textures and things, it looks like, you know, she had taken some gel medium, you know, maybe laid it down, let it dry, worked over it with washes of oil to bring out, kind of create that texture. And, uh, and then did more opaque painting for the figure. Uh, this is a lovely piece uh, by Cecil Morgan. And, um, you know, it's, it's a really, really nice, direct, uh, a la primo looking painting. Um, and, you know, when you start looking at it very carefully, you know, it, it's all direct paint. There's not a lot of softening and blending and stuff going on there. Uh, but he was really, really intentional about where he wanted you to focus, which was that face. And look at the difference between, say, the face, the eyes and the nose, and even the bottom of the face and the hands. Um, so what he did is he basically softened that hand down just a little bit, and he kept the values uh, closer in range and muted the color just a little bit so that Again, you know, the focus goes back up, you know, to those eyes and you just stay right in this area, okay? Uh, so, you know, really nicely done piece. Uh, this is uh, Celeste McCullough. And, um, you know, it's, it's a very striking painting. Uh, it's, again, kind of about medium size. Uh, it's almost abstract, uh, very, very thick layers of paint, you know, and there's a lot of scraping and, and cutting. Again, I think a lot of the background was probably laid in uh, first and cut through and scraped. And then she uh, worked the buildings in the foreground over the top of that. Because you, you actually begin to see some of the underlying color coming through. Uh, and it, it gives it a really interesting effect. Um, this is a scratch board piece. And uh, Bob, who's been joining us, uh, does a lot of scratch board. And um, I'm going to blow this up a little bit uh, because just just the amount of delicacy and mm. detail, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a, a really beautifully done piece. You know, it almost looks like a photograph. You know, when you first look at it, um, like a black and white photo, but then you begin to get closer and you begin to see the surface uh, and cut and scrape. Um, this did is Bob uh, do that one? No, he did not. No, it was another artist, uh, Catherine Moore. Okay. Um, this is a, a fellow I've known for a good number of years. I've uh, gone to many drawing groups with him. His name is Tim Hall. And uh, Tim uh, started doing these portraits. Now, if you look at this, uh, this is a big painting. It's probably about 60 by 60, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's substantial in size. But uh, when you start looking at the surface of this, you know, this is all, you know, paint, you know, oil paint. But then you come over here and he's laid down a dark background and then he's come back over it with uh, a lot of gold leaf and layered the gold leaf over the surface, you know, uh, stopping at the edge of the face, okay? And, uh, you know, you don't, you don't get the impact of this piece uh, that you do, you know, in life, just because of the scale of it. But, uh, you know, it's a really striking, very strong piece for him as well, okay? Uh, this is uh, Jill McGannon. Jill is uh, Patrick's wife, and uh, you know she's a very, very good painter, uh, very high-level painter. She's worked in galleries for very many, you know, for a lot of years. Um, and this is her piece, uh, beautiful landscape. And this is pretty typical of her work. 
and it's it's fairly large. Uh, Patrick uh, again had another piece. Uh, this is another one of his figurative pieces, and it's it's beautifully done. Um, it's really quite nice. Uh, Susie Schultz, who is a good friend of mine and I've known uh, for many, many years. Now this is this piece is pretty typical for Susie. I showed a piece earlier this morning and what she's been doing over the years is she's been working with an acrylic base. So she'll create some kind of abstract texture uh, or surface, you know, on the canvas or, or the panel that she's working on. And then she'll come back in with oil paint over it you know, and develop a figure, um, you know, and this is pretty typical, you know, of her work, right? Now this piece is, is again, it's probably about six feet tall, um, you know, so it's quite large and it almost takes on a metallic look, but this is actually just glazes of kind of yellow, yellow ochre or something over the surface. Um, but it, it kind of gives that look of something metallic. Uh, this is uh, Christina Havens. I've known her for a good number of years. And this is a fairly typical, uh, you know, painting. I think this is her son. Uh, and it's, it's a very direct kind of a la prima, you know, painting. Um, Susan Burns. And uh, I really enjoyed this piece. It was a lot of fun. Uh, again, you know, it's a very contemporary, very modern painting. Uh, there's a lot of layering of color, scraping, cutting back through. Um, you know, it's it's a pretty active uh, surface. And um, this is uh, Marshall Asburn. And Marshall did a very large drawing. Uh, this drawing is probably a, just the paper part. It's probably about five feet tall. Wow. Okay. Uh, and this is in graphite, and uh, you know it's 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 a fascinating piece to see. And then right next to it was probably one of the tiniest pieces in the whole show, and uh, and just beautifully done. This is Ronnie Often. You know Ronnie has uh, been a pastel art artist for many many years, and um, just has a beautiful technique of working with pastel. And again, this is probably a piece of uh, board or something that's been gessoed with some kind of pumice or something in it to take the pastel. And uh, Melinda. How big was that? Oh, it was tiny. It was probably like eight by eight. You know, oh. it's a tiny little piece. Uh, this is a piece of sculpture. Um, it, was, it, it was a striking piece, fairly large, um, almost life size. Uh, Matthew uh, Jacoby, I thought this was one of the more interesting pieces. It doesn't look like much, um, you know, from here, but when you zoom in on it, uh, just the technique, you know, and how he kind of gritted everything off, and then he went back in and he hand colored, you know, all of these little, you know, rectangles, um, mm -hmm. you know, creating sort of this mosaic effect. Um, okay, Jeffrey Wilson. This again was a really interesting piece. This is all pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that he's taken and he's somehow glued and adhered together. And this is more of a sculptural piece than anything else. And, and then once he had it all together, he's uh, covered it in some kind of metallic paint surface. Okay. Mm. Is that your opinion? <laughs> okay, this is a blue caterpillar. Oh, we have less than a minute. Okay, uh, this was had to be the strangest piece in the whole show. Okay, it really did. Um, you know, Larry would probably love this one. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, of a movie I saw, and I'm trying to think of the name of it, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty fascinating. So anyway, uh, that's, you know, that's a small part of this show. Um, like I said, it, it would be worth going to go see it. I think it's a, I think it's pretty doable. Uh, you know, if you go during the week, there's very few people there, so it's fairly safe. And uh, you know, it's the Cobb Marietta Museum. Um, you know, they they do require masks. Uh, they do keep the number of people in the building limited. So you know, uh, just you know, give yourself about two hours. 
you know, uh, to go through the show and, you know, really begin to, to look at some of these things. 